everybody, it's Crystal Ann Compton and I hope that you are having a beautiful day wherever you are on the planet today. I am coming at you in this video with our quasi-weekly three-card pull and I'm actually using a really cool deck this week. This is a deck that I was inspired to purchase from one of the members of the Lightworkers Lab, whose first name is Leticia. Now the Lightworkers Lab actually has a couple of subgroups and one of the subgroups is an area where people can go and ask for direct intuitive insight and for prayers and healing. And another subgroup is called the Lab Lightroom where blossoming, burgeoning and established lightworker practitioners like readers and healers and mediums and energy workers can actually use the space to practice and to get feedback and critique and things of that nature. Anyway, one of our members was actually up in the lab Lightroom using this particular deck of cards. And as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, I've got to have that. It's beautiful. And I went out promptly and purchased it. This deck we're going to be using today is Osho Zen Tarot. And I have to tell you that the artwork is really, really beautiful. But what I love about this deck is that the each card has two facets. One is the commentary, which is essentially an explanation of what the card means. And then there's a quote from Osho regarding the theme of the card. So it's pretty deep um, and allows you to really kind of connect with the information coming through, the knowledge coming through, and just what the card is trying to tell us. So previous to getting up today, I selected, I went through all the cards, I looked at them, I touched on them, I felt them, and I selected three cards that I felt were a match for us, and I will show them to you in a moment. But first, I just want to tell all of my patrons on Patreon, first of all, thank you so much for your support. I deeply, deeply appreciate it. In the next week, I will be releasing a class for patrons who contribute at five dollars or more a month and this class is going to be on the portal system within the human body now this portal system is not your chakra system these are well I'm going to be discussing three major portals that each and every one of us possesses now that allows us to make trans-dimensional contact and have energy exchange with a variety of different grids a variety of different light beings and so on and so forth. So it's a teaching that I really haven't taught a lot, but I will be sharing that with my patrons in Patreon, and that's going to be coming up within the next week or so. I'm putting it together right now. Additionally, on Saturday, so that's the day after tomorrow, since today is Thursday, I'm going to be doing a live meetup hangout with my patrons who contribute at $20 a month or more. It's going to be at 4 p.m. CST. I will provide the link on Patreon, but we're going to spend maybe an hour or two hours just chit-chatting, talking, and I will be giving intuitive readings, and we'll just let spirit do what spirit came there to do. And so I really encourage any of you who contribute at that level to put that in your calendar, make it a date to meet with me at 4 p.m. Central Time on Saturday, and we're just going to have a lot of fun. But I just want to thank all of my subscribers, all of my friends, all of my followers. I just love you guys so very much. I know I've been a little quiet these last couple of weeks, but I think you all know why. I'm starting to kind of get back on schedule, back on track. I'm just back from vacation, so I'm I'm playing catch up. But I'm in a good space, and I hope that you're in a good space too. I'm just like downloads, people. Learning, absorption, sponge life. I'm living the sponge life right now. But I didn't want to let another week go without doing this with you. So what I'm going to do now to begin this week's three-card reading, I'm going to show you three different cards and what I want you to do is just be with the cards as they show up on your screen and really observe yourself to see if you feel anything when a particular card comes up. What we're looking for here is something like a magnetic tug, a little pull, a little sensation that would tell you, yep, that card's for me. You also want to look for something like an image that might cross the mind's eye. This can be an image of a number one, two, or three, or something else that might indicate what card is your card. You also might hear something. You can hear this in your, your mind's voice, or you might even actually hear this in your environment, although that's not too common, but there may be a message that comes through that says, hey, this card is for you. Essentially, though, just pay attention. 
Spirit speaks to us all differently because we are all different. But if we're not paying attention, if we're not listening to the voice of spirit, then we're going to miss the instruction. And I really believe these three cards are for the people watching this video whenever you're watching it. It doesn't have to be this week, by the way. It can be two years from now if you're watching this. Uh, consciousness and spirit and source energy is non-local and exists outside of the constraints of time. So if you're watching it, there's a reason for it. So really just try to pay attention and see what card resonates with you. And then after I run through the three cards, I will reveal them and read to you directly out of the book, the meaning for each card. Are you ready? Okay. Let's start with card number one. Let me try and get a little closer. I know the light is bright. Card number one. What are you feeling as you connect with card number one? All right. Moving along. Let's go to card number two. Card number two. Are you feeling anything in your physical body? Maybe a quickening of some kind that usually indicates a yes. Maybe a constriction of some kind that often means a no. Maybe you don't feel anything. That's just a neutral response. But make sure you're checking in. Card number two. Moving on from card number two, let's go now to card number three. Card number three, how does this card feel for you? Do you feel something more or something less with card number three? Card number three. In the spirit of being thorough, let's run through those three cards very quickly again. Card number one, card number one. Card number two, card number two, and finally, card number three, card number three. All right, did you get some sort of an indication? Were you given some sort of a prompt? If so, I want you to go with it. Don't second guess yourself. Go with the first answer that you got. If the first answer you got is one, stick with one. If it's two, stick with two. Now, some of you might have actually felt a magnetic tug with more than one card, and that does happen, but what I want you to do is pay attention to which card tugged on you more, which one had a stronger pull for you. That'll be the first card that you want to focus on. And then if a secondary card also was something that you resonated with, that card may be a complement or a supplement or a modifier to the first card. So pay attention to the meaning of both cards if you had, or all three cards if you got tugs for all three, but focusing primarily on the one card that you resonated or vibed with the most. All right, now for the reveal. Card number one. Card number one is the rebel. The rebel. Super cool artwork here as well. Lots of interesting colors, yellows, oranges, reds. The powerful and authoritative figure in this card is clearly the master of his own destiny. On his shoulders is an emblem of the sun and the torch he holds in his right hand symbolizes the light of his own hard won truth. Whether he is wealthy, or poor, the rebel is really an emperor because he's broken the chains of society's repressive conditioning and opinions. He has formed himself by embracing all of the colors of the rainbow, emerging from the dark and formless roots of his unconscious past and growing wings to fly into the sky. His very way of being is rebellious, not because he's fighting against anybody or anything, but because he's discovered his own true nature and is determined to live in accordance with that nature. The eagle is his spirit animal, a messenger between earth and sky. 
The rebel challenges us to be courageous enough to take responsibility for who we are and to live our truth. Powerful. Live our truth. Now let's read the quote from Osho that ties in with this card. Quote, People are afraid, very much afraid, of those who know themselves. They have a certain power, a certain aura, and a certain magnetism, a charisma that can take out alive young people from the traditional imprisonment. The enlightened man cannot be enslaved. That is the difficulty. And he cannot be imprisoned. Every genius who has known something of the inner is bound to be a little difficult to be absorbed. He is going to be an upsetting force. The masses don't want to be disturbed, even though they may be in misery. They're in misery, but they're accustomed to the misery. And anybody who is not miserable looks like a stranger. The enlightened man is the greatest stranger in the world. He does not seem to belong to anybody. No organization confines him. No community, no society, no nation. Whoa, that one gave me goosebumps right on the top of my head. That's why they call us way showers. That's why they call us trailblazers, because we step into our authentic nature and our truth where being and believing are one, and through that authenticity, we change the game. And that's what we came here to do. Occupy your true nature. Stand in the truth of who you are. Card number one. Moving on now to card number two. How many of you selected card number two? This card is Breakthrough. Breakthrough. I had one of those recently. Breakthroughs often are preceded by breakdowns, unfortunately. But that's okay, it's all part of the process. Let's read about the meaning of this card. The predominance of red in this card indicates at a glance that its subject is energy, power, and strength. The brilliant glow emanates from the solar plexus or center of power in the figure, and the posture is one of exuberance and also determination. All of us occasionally reach a point when enough is enough. At such times, it seems we must do something, anything, even if it later turns out to be a mistake, to throw off the burdens and restrictions that are limiting us. If we don't do this, they threaten to suffocate and cripple our very life energy itself. If you're now feeling that enough is enough, Allow yourself to take the risk of shattering the old patterns and limitations that have kept your energy from flowing. In doing so, you'll be amazed at the vitality and empowerment this breakthrough can bring to your life. Let me repeat. If you're now feeling that enough is enough, allow yourself to take the risk of shattering old patterns and limitations that have kept your energy from flowing. In doing so, you'll be amazed at the vitality and empowerment this breakthrough can bring to your life. Now let's read Osho's quote in connection to this card. To transform breakdowns into breakthroughs is the whole function of a master. The psychotherapist simply patches you up. That's his function. He's not there to transform you. You need a metapsychology, the psychology of the Buddhas. It is the greatest adventure in life to go through a breakdown consciously. Can I get an amen? Whew, let me read that again. It is the greatest adventure in life to go through a breakdown consciously. It is the greatest risk also because there's no guarantee that the breakdown will become a breakthrough. It does become, but these things cannot be guaranteed. Your chaos is very ancient. For many, many lives, you have been in chaos. It is thick and it is dense. It is almost a universe unto itself. So when you enter into it with your small capacity, of course you will feel danger. But without facing this danger, nobody has ever become integrated. Nobody has ever become an individual, indivisible. 
Zen or meditation is the method which will help you to go through the chaos, through the dark night of the soul, balanced, disciplined, and alert. The dawn is not far away, but before you can reach the dawn, the dark night has to be passed through. And as the dawn comes closer, the night will become darker. It is always darkest before the dawn. And for those of you who may be feeling those trials, those tribulations, those challenges, not unlike what I've been experiencing in the last month, you know what I'm talking about. Know that in the deep thick of it, it's hard to see the breakthrough on the other side of it. But the dawn does come and your breakthrough draweth nigh. It's on its way. And verily I say unto you, it is here already. Card number two. Last but not least, for those of you who pinged or zing zinged on card number three, this card is the card of success. This character is obviously on top of the world right now and the whole world is celebrating his success with a ticker tape parade. Because of your willingness to accept the recent challenges of life, you are now or you will soon be enjoying a wonderful ride on the tiger of success. Welcome it. Enjoy it and share your joy with others. And remember that all bright parades have a beginning and also an end. If you keep this in mind and squeeze every drop of juice out of the happiness you are experiencing now or soon will experience, you'll be able to take the future as it comes without regrets. But don't be tempted to try to hold on to this abundant moment or coat it in plastic so that it lasts forever. The greatest wisdom to keep in mind with all the phenomena in the parade of your life, whether they be valleys or peaks, is that this too shall pass. Celebrate, yes, and keep on riding the tiger. Awesome. This card indicates that you are now enjoying a time of success or you are about to enter into a time of success and really allow yourself to be present in the success. Really allow yourself to feel it and to move with it, knowing that after the hill comes the veil, comes the hill, comes the veil, the cycles of life continue to turn. So enjoy it and be present for it. Now for the quote from Osho connected to this card of success. Watch the waves in the ocean. The higher the wave goes, the deeper is the wake that follows it. One moment you are the wave and another moment you are the hollow wake that follows. Enjoy both and don't get addicted to one or the other. Don't say, I would always like to be on the peak because it's not possible. Simply see the fact it is not possible. It has never happened and it never will happen. It is simply impossible, not in the nature of things. Then what to do? Enjoy the peak while it lasts and then enjoy the valley when it comes. What is wrong with the valley? What is wrong with being low? It is a relaxation. A peak is an excitement and nobody can exist continuously in an excitement. Wise words from Osho. And there you have it. Card number one, the rebel. Stand in your truth. Be who it is that you are. You came here to be a way show or celebrate your authenticity. Card number two, breakthrough. And right before breakthrough, we tend to have a breakdown. Understand that it's always darkest before the dawn, but the dawn does come and your dawn is on its way. Last but not least, success. You're either in a period of success, this ticker tape parade, or you're about to enter into a great period of success. And yay for that. That's awesome. But don't forget the cycles of life exist. And when this success turns into a valley, it's okay. That's just life. Experience life fully at full levels, 100% without regrets. And there you have it. This week's three card reading. But again, whenever you watch this, if you resonated with a card, it's because it applies to you. And that message was for you.
In closing, I just want to say again that I love each and every one of you. Thank you so very much for being a part of this community. If you'd like to join my online spiritual community on Facebook called the Lightworkers Lab, I would love to have you. Otherwise, please subscribe so we can stay connected. Have a beautiful day.